lead 3-1 to one over the New Jersey Devils. We're at the ready to start the second period of tonight's game. Mike Bournes with Al Koken and Jeff Rimmer. We've just got the official stat sheet here. They're still saying it was Kelly Miller that scored the goal. Now, I called that as Mike Ridley's goal. What did you think? Ridley all the way, and I will show you on the replay, Kelly Miller never gets a stick on it. But what a huge goal this is. A bad break for the Capitals got the Devils on track. They're on the board, 1-0. Watch what Mike Ridley does. With the defenseman committed, driver down, he just sends what looks to be a centering pass through the crease. Now, Sean Burke will reach out with his goaltender stick and touch it and send it back in towards him, and it deflects off his body. You'll see Kelly Miller never gets a stick on it, and watch how the Devils turn him away from the net. Now they're officially announcing that Mike Ridley gets the goal, even though on the official stat sheet for the first period, it still was credited Kelly Miller, but a little bit of justice is, uh, is coming through for Mike Ridley in that regard. Yet another first goal for Mike Ridley, getting the Capitals on the board, and then two big ones to follow from Hunter and Leach. Right now, they've got control of this game, Mike. All right, we're ready to go with the second period. Here's Jeff Rimmer. Thanks, Mike. And Mike and Al, just for your information, and certainly everybody at home watching on DC 20, much the same as we saw in Game 4. The Devils scoring early, but the Capitals coming right back and taking the lead. We hope that uh, it'll be a carbon copy of Game 4, where the Capitals, of course, skated off the ice and, of course, evened up the series. But still two periods to go. We don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves. Mike Forns and Al Koken are ready to bring you period number two. Let's rejoin them now. All right, Jeff. we got a long way to go yet. Here goes Curvers in the corner. Takes it behind his own net and starts out. Lead pass to center ice. Here's Sorella. Up to Muller. He's across the line. And Stevens ties him up in the corner. David Maley has it taken away. Peter Sundstrom starts out to Bobby Gould. Left wing side. Broughton steals that puck. And he starts to center ice. Sundstrom drops it back to his own line. Scott Stevens the middle to Greg Adams. Challenge at the blue line. Maley takes it away. Gives it over to Driver. Thrown back in now by Brock. Peters roadblocks behind the net. Leaves it there for Larry Murphy. He starts out to center ice. Ben Gustafson bumped on the play. The puck comes back to Jack O'Callaghan. He fires from just outside the blue line. Peters with a skate save. Into the corner, goes behind the net for Johnson. Now chased, and Scott Stevens works to the blue line. It comes to McLean. He throws it in behind the net. Peters is held up by Mark Johnson. And the puck cleared off the right wing boards all the way down. This will be icing as O'Callaghan goes back for it against the Washington Capitals. The faceoff returns to the capital zone with 18.39 to go here in the second period. And Mike, except for a couple of early flurries and then a little exchange midway through that first period, there was not a lot of great forward-checking pressure by the New Jersey Devils and thus not a lot of great pressure on Pete Peters. Even though New Jersey outshot the Caps 9-8 in that first stanza, Pete Peters didn't have a lot of second chances he had to deal with. The unfortunate bounce led to the first goal, but other than that, Peters was able to make the saves on everything else, and those rebounds cleared, and New Jersey, whose forechecking has been a big factor in this series, really did not allow, did not get anything on track because the Caps' defense, with the help of the forwards, didn't allow it. New Jersey outshot the Capitals 9-8 to eight during the first period. Jack O'Callaghan of the Devils was the only player on either team with more than one shot on goal. He had two. Here's a two-on-one break, and a save made by Burke. He now sits on the puck, and it's frozen. Check. had to try and hold Bobby Gould away or Dave Christian away to the right of the net. This becomes a pretty big stop by Sean Burke. It's a two-on-one situation. Christian takes the shot instead of trying to work something with Ben Gustafson, and Burke has it, then loses it just for a moment and has to scramble around with it. So that becomes a pretty key stop if it's 4-1 right off the bat on the Capitals' first shot in the second period. Very difficult for the New Jersey Devils to come back, but Burke keeps him there right now. Wrist shot wide of the net. Burke puts it back of the goal, and here's Belichick to start out. Leads it out to Doug Sullivan. Loisel to the point, kept in. Christian a drive just wide. And this caroms off the glass into the seats. Well, at the 20-minute mark of the first period, Jim Korn of the Devils was tagged with a 10-minute misconduct penalty for saying something apparently to referee Kerry Fraser. So we won't be seeing Korn for some time yet here in the second period. 
out of the penalty boxes now come Dale Hunter who is headed back to the bench. There's Rod Langway lending such a inspirational lift to the Capitals just by being there on that bench. You see him leaning on the crutches. But just having that guy around has got to give his teammates a lift. Boy, does he hate this, though. He wants to get in there and play. He just cannot stand watching all this action and not being able to do anything about it except scream at the TV or people on the bench. He's no fun to be around, is he? No. <laughs> when he's not playing. Here come the Devils starting out. Mark Johnson, right wing side. McLean tosses it back into the capital zone. Gustafson, long lead pass to center ice for Dave Christian. That very clearly across two lines. And offside is called. David Christian has to play left wing now tonight with Mike Gartner on the right side with Gustafson. So Brian Murray kind of gambling a bit in an effort to get his leading goal scorer on track. He really is asking David Christian to make a sacrifice. Christian, as the playoffs have gone on, has started to increase his workload. Two goals in game four. It's been such a big factor, but now you're asking him to swing over to the left side. He has played that before. Played it a lot last year for the Washington Capitals. Has played it before in his career. So it's not like it's a brand new situation for him, but after being comfortable throughout the playoffs on the right side with Gustafson, Christian's being asked to do a lot for the team tonight. Here's Driver a shot. Peters blocks that to the corner. Kelly Miller up the boards out to center ice, and now Patrick Sundstrom throws it on into the Washington end. At the blue line. Mark Johnson keeps it going. Now it's sent over for Curvers, but comes out of the zone to center ice. Here comes Mark Johnson back in. Scott Stevens gets there first. And Pavanka kicks it out to center. Now Mike Ridley up on the left wing. Miller, the galley in front. He fires a shot, hit the post. Gary Galley comes very, very close to scoring, and it just goes off the goal post. Galley keeps it inside the New Jersey line. Here's Ridley to the corner. He's knocked to the ice. Mark Johnson tries to play it along the sideboards, and it's flipped over the head of Galley and all the way back inside the Washington zone. Capitals have the lead 3 to 1, 16.35 to play here in the second period. Ridley chasing in behind the Devil's net. Kirk Muller starts out. Washington with a line change. Broughton moves ahead to center. Gets across the line, but Verbeek is ahead of the play, offside. Pushing and shoving now between Muller and Washington's Ivan Korovo, and they wind up right in front of the Capitals' goal. The sticks are being held high, but the linesmen are on the scene and seem to have the situation under control. There's a break in the action with a score. Washington 3, New Jersey 1. area Nissan dealer today. Waiting for the official announcements of the penalties, but Kirk Muller and Ivan Korovo are the men in the box. Take a look at it. It all started a lot earlier than this with an Ivan Korovo shot against Muller right near the Capitals bench. Now here is the great play that Gary Galley makes. Unbelievable how he gets that shot off, but can't buy the break. There's the hit that starts everything between Muller and Corvo, and then as they come up ice, exchange some sticks, some slashes. And it really looks like maybe Corvo could have gotten a little extra time for getting that first shot in there on Kirk Muller. Well, Kerry Fraser did not think that those actions were very sportsmanlike, so he gives unsportsmanlike conduct penalties. At 3.37 of the first period, and Verbeek inquiring now of Fraser. Why? Yet Corvo didn't get something else. So the unsportsmanlike conduct call has been the penalty of the playoffs, hasn't it? I don't think we saw maybe five of those in the 80-game regular season. We're seeing a whole host of them in the playoffs, and it seems particularly when Kerry Fraser is refereeing, he seems to really be favoring that call a lot this year. Jim Schoenfeld now sending David Maley out on the ice. And he's going to go right up against Dale Hunter on this faceoff. Now, David Maley, normally a left wing. Do you think that Jim Schoenfeld is trying to shake a few things up here with a tough guy in David Maley against the capital strongman Dale Hunter? 
The draw comes back to Danico. He rifles it into the Washington zone, mainly to the corner. He's bumped right away in the corner there by Grant Ledyard. The puck centered wide to the goal mouth. We've got a penalty call coming up now, a delayed call. It's going to be against Washington. Sundstrom comes in. Hunters takes the puck and centers it. But just as the Devils pull Burke out of the nets, Washington will go down a man now, giving the Devils the power play. There's a break in the action with a score. Capitals. Seems like Rod Langway has been asked to leave the Capitals bench. The phone call came down to referee Kerry Fraser at the penalty timekeeper. He went over the Capitals bench, and Langway had a lead. Well, you're only allowed to have a, one coach and one assistant that is not dressed on the bench or a certain number of player of people other than players back there. So the Devils apparently wanted that rule enforced. They no doubt knew what an inspiration Langway would be just to have around. It's one thing to let him in the dressing room, but they didn't want him on the bench. Up to center ice. A pass to the blue line. Here's McLean cutting in, fires, and Peters makes the save, kicking it all the way out of the zone. Gustafson picks it up on the rebound. Down the left wing side, a slap shot, and a save made by Sean Burke in the New Jersey goal. Capitals still shorthanded, keeping the pressure on in the New Jersey end. Tom Curver spins out of the corner, plays it up the boards now. John McLean hooked as he gets to the line. Gustafson takes it away, backs it up for Scott Stevens. Devils changing on the fly, and Washington with loads of time. Stevens winds up and sends it all the way down. 45 seconds now remaining in the penalty call to Grant Ledyard for interference. It came at 3.56. Kelly Miller hangs on at center ice. Maley breaks free and starts to the blue line. Leads it ahead. Here's Verbeek. Now back to the point, Danico. Over rink wide to O'Callaghan. The point O'Callaghan sets up, winds, fires, and it's blocked by Hatcher in front of the net. Played by Miller along the sideboards. Now Danico back in the corner. Nine seconds left in the power play. Scott Stevens sees open ice and just throws the puck all the way down. That takes care of the penalty to Ledyard. He's on the ice, and the Capitals are at full strength. Aaron Broughton flips it right in front. Stevens knocks it down with a high stick. But Danico plays it to the corner. Now Scott Stevens starts the rush to Bobby Gould. Here's Gould to center ice. Gets across the line. He's by O'Callaghan. In behind the net to Gartner. Gartner. At the side of the goal. Taken over by Jack O'Callaghan. Aaron Broughton to the corner with the puck now for New Jersey. And out of the zone all the way back inside the Washington end. Both clubs at full strength. still in the box for the Capitals. Muller and Korn are still sitting out penalties for New Jersey. Here comes Loisel down the left wing. Tries to center. That's blocked. And the pass picked up now by Dave Christian. Let ahead to Ridley. Across the line. Drop pass Christian. A shot. And it's up high off the glass. Now Claude Loisel moves to his own line. Out to center ice for Doug Brown. Brown backs it up. Joe Sorella starts across the line. And offside called against New Jersey. There's a break in the action with a score. The Capitals three, the Devils one. Game six of the Patrick Division Finals. The Capitals leading the Devils three to one with 12.56 left to go in the second period. Al Koken, Mike Forge, and Jeff River with you exclusively on WDCA TV 20. Here's... Bruce Driver to the blue line, back into the Washington zone. Steve Leach, up the right wing boards, out to center ice. Curvers puts it back into the Capitals end. And Hunter throws it in. Here comes Patrick Sundstrom, gets across the line. Mark Johnson over on the right wing, and a shot right on net, the save off Verbeek's drive by Peters. Back come the Capitals. Here's Corvo over to Leach. And now play has been called. Linesman Kevin Collins has called offside with 12-16 to go in the second period. 
Well, you can guarantee yourself the best seat available for all the Cap Home playoff games. Just put down a deposit on a season ticket or a partial plan for next year. That entitles you to purchase the best available tickets to all the Cap Home playoff games. Cap sales reps are standing by right now to give you more information. Give them a call at 386-7000, the number 386 386- 7,000. Al, if fans at home are wondering about what we talked about with Rod Langway being asked to leave the Washington players bench, Rule 9B in the rule book states that no one but players in uniform, manager, coach, and trainers shall be permitted to occupy the benches so provided. So you can have all the stick boys you want down there. <laughs> the player isn't dressed. He's not allowed on the bench unless one of the assistant coaches would not be there. And of course, during the first period, Terry Murray oftentimes comes up and sits upstairs. So Rod Langway was okay as long as Terry Murray wasn't there. Once Terry takes his place behind the second period bench, they made Rod Langway leave. Here's Velashek. Loisel out to Doug Brown. Brown gets across the blue line. Peters makes a play up the right wing boards. Gartner hustling after it, but can't get to it in time. Burke moves it out to center ice. Here's Driver. Let ahead now to Loiselle. Dump back inside the Washington zone. 11-15 to play here in the second period. Capitals in the lead, 3-1. Bank Gustafson to Scott Stevens, now back inside the New Jersey line, and Doug Sullivan. Up the middle for Kirk Muller. Turns it around to Driver. Across the blue line, here's Verbeek to the point. Gervers takes it out to center ice. All the way back into the Washington zone, and Pete Peters drops it behind the goal for Scott Stevens the boards and all the way down back inside New Jersey ice. Burke plays it aside and here's Danico to start out. Quick lead pass to Muller. He forwards it to Broughton but it's past Broughton all the way in. And as Greg Smith goes back for it, icing is the call. There's a break in the action with a score. The Capitals three and the New Jersey Devils one. Attention. Clean them up and move them out. It's Bob Rosenthal Spring Cleaning Sale with over 400 new 1987 cars and trucks. All at free price increases that could save you thousands. I want them pampered, polished, and priced to sell. Plus, over 1,000 1988s with low-rate financing, cashback, and dealer incentives that'll save you hundreds. Whatever it takes. Until this weekend only and only at Rosenthal Acura and Rosenthal Suzuki in Gaithersburg, Maryland, and Landmark Honda in Alexandria, Virginia. We're almost halfway through this hockey game, just 10.28 left to go in the second period. I guarantee you we're live in game six, but does it look like a tape of game four? Exactly what the Capitals did so well in game four, they are doing again tonight. The forwards in particular slowing the Devils up through the neutral zone, the defense standing up, great teamwork between the defense of the Washington Capitals and those forwards. Everybody's coming back to help and moving the puck quickly. Mark Johnson on the right wing for John McLean. He's tied up by Greg Smith on the play. Into the corner goes Adams after it. Battles with Jack O'Callaghan. Patrick Sundstrom turns and shoots. Peters makes the pad save. Here's McLean with the puck. Taken away now by Peter Sundstrom. Sundstrom works to the blue line. Tries to get around Danico. Centers to Adams a shot. Oh, and Burke comes out to rob Greg Adams with a sliding pad save. Back come the Devils on the attack. Patrick Sundstrom challenges Greg Smith. Smith takes him over, and back comes Greg Adams for the Capitals. Led ahead to Peter Sundstrom, taken out at the blue line. Puck cleared back to the Washington zone. Here's Greg Smith off the glass to center. Mark Johnson starts back. He's into the Washington zone. Tries to center. Dale Hunter blocks it, and now Larry Murphy flips it all the way back to center ice. Here's Maley. Tied up inside the line. Hunter works it free. Back to center, and a stolen puck. Racing in is Corvo. A shot and a goal. Ivan Corvo on a breakaway goal that solves Sean Burke. Washington takes a 4-1 to lead. This time he gets his junior teammate beaten completely. Remember in game four, Corvo with some room to maneuver fires a shot on Sean Burke that Burke got a piece of and Peter Sundstrom finished it off. 
once again, it sticks side. It's not as low as that original shot, but Corvo, when he played with Burke in Toronto as the Marlboros, knew to beat Sean Burke on that stick side, usually low. Definitely he gets it on the stick side, I think a little higher, but again, it, Mike, it goes back to the great play of the Capitals in their own zone. Hunter comes back and helps, breaks up a play, kicks it out of the zone, and the Capitals controlling that neutral zone, and they're getting the jump on the New Jersey defense in that regard. New Jersey trying to rush up, trying to get things started, and out comes Ivan Korov with that great speed and anticipation and makes it count on the breakaway. 4-1 Capitals. Unassisted goal for Ivan Korovo, his first of the playoffs, and it comes at 10.43 of the second period. Boy, Ivan Korovo has been living for that. Oh, has he? Going against his old junior teammate like that, and it's just something that Corvo has loved to have tried to get himself in a position for that. And you know he wouldn't have lived it down, too, with his teammates no. if he had missed it. He's been the guy telling everybody, this is how you beat Sean Burke. I know the guy. You listen to me, you'll do all right. Well, he actually proved it there. All that knowledge had not been employed by Corvo until this breakaway opportunity, and he makes good on it. He must have done that a hundred times, thousand times probably in the careers that they had in Toronto. After practice, you go the breakaways, you practice that penalty shot. Corvo knew exactly what to do. I wonder what Burke was thinking as he saw Corvo bearing down on him. Why would he have not have picked up as well on perhaps Ivan's favorite moves? Well, maybe that's why Ivan shot it a little higher on the stick side than just low along the ice. Here's Burke. Throwing it up the left wing boards. Washington leads four to one with 840 to play here in the second period. Broughton breaks in. He's alone. A backhand shot. Oh, it danced off the inside of Pete Peters' goal pad. Comes all the way out to center ice. Now driver starts back in. Into the corner for Broughton. He and Ledyard collide. The puck cleared over to Gartner on the right wing. Out to Gustafson and bounced for Dave Christian at the blue line. Christian chased in there by Verbeek, and now it comes back for Driver. Inside the Washington zone. In alone, a fake, and Muller never gets the shot underway. Peters stayed with him even though he was down. The puck lies on the back of the netting, and now play is called. With eight minutes and one second to go here in the second period. A line change coming here for the Washington Capitals, but Kirk Muller with a good scoring chance, and Peters prevented him from putting it in the net. Two strong plays by Pete Peters. Kevin Hatcher has lost his stick. He can't go after him. This time, remember how Muller had beat Malarchuk twice in game five, but he did it on the backhand both times. This time, Peters forces Muller to that forehand, and look how Pete stays with him, tracks him through that crease, and then extends the body once Muller is forced out wide. Did not give Kirk Muller any room to shoot. But before that, Pete Peters had made a great save on Aaron Brock, who had some room down the middle. This is the type of goaltending that wins you hockey series, playoff series goaltending coming tonight from Pete Peters. Here's John McLean along the sideboards, battles with Hunter. The puck comes back of the goal, and Scott Stevens works it back into the corner. Led off the boards now by Gary Galley all the way back inside the New Jersey zone. Jack O'Callaghan circles the net and starts out. Patrick Sundstrom taken out of the play. Here's Pavanka with the puck. Michael Pavanka to the blue line. Kelly Miller shoots wide, and now Ridley tries to poke it in, but that goes over the goal. It's played to the point, and it comes out to center. Miller dumps it back into the New Jersey zone. Crowd has quieted considerably here at the Meadowlands with the Capitals taking a 4-1 to one lead. Danico breaks down the left wing, gets inside the Washington zone. Ken Danico tries to center. Galley blocks that attempt, and here's Ridley to clear it to the blue line. Sorella keeps it in. Now Pavanka out to Ridley. Turns it around and starts as the Devils change. Ridley dumps it back inside New Jersey ice. Capitals with a line change going. Here comes Doug Sullivan to his own line. Up to center. Jim Korn back out there now after serving that 10-minute misconduct penalty. He puts it in the corner. 
Murphy flips it to center ice. Peter Sundstrom picks up the puck. Couldn't get past Belichick without being bumped, and Korn takes possession. Now throws it into the corner for David Maley. Maley springs a pass out to Sorella. He works across the Washington blue line. Sorella's wrist shot caught by Peters, and he holds on. There's a break in the action with a score. The Capitals four, and the Devils one. It was just about this time that Pete Peters was carried off on a stretcher in game four and sent to a hospital. Here he's standing up and knocking everything at him away that the New Jersey Devils have thrown at him, particularly in the last three minutes of this second period. He's made saves with the stick, with the pads, and just moments ago, a sparkling glove save to keep it 4-1 Capitals. That game, of course, wound up with a score of 4-1. There were no other devil goals after that. The Caps did get one more from Dale Hunter after Peters departed. But Gary Galley back in the lineup tonight as well as Pete Peters. And the Caps are back. Here's Muller. Tries to move it to the point man. Sundstrom steals. He starts out to Bobby Gould. Sundstrom works it to Gould. Cutting into the goal. Now turns to the corner. Brings it out front for Hunter. And the pass was off his skate. Burke makes the play. And leads it out to center ice. Tap back inside the New Jersey zone. Here's Bruce Driver. Off the boards to center. This tip now into the crowd from Grant Ledger. We apologize for our technical problems in trying to show you the replay of the Ivan Korva goal. Take a look at it. Now watch where this shot is. It's not right along the ice. It's up about waist level. But he goes stick side on Sean Burke. And it looked like Burke was expecting something low. You see how Burke is down? Burke normally a very good, strong stand-up goaltender. He's expecting Corvo, I think, to shoot it right along the ice at that stick side. That, to me, seemed like where he prepared. And Ivan Corvo crossed him by going up a little higher. Twenty-six to go, second period. The Devils have outshot the Caps 16 to 13 for the night, but Washington leads on the scoreboard four to one. Puck shot way up into the crowd. We'll have another face-off. While well, you were talking about some of the hockey bigwigs who are in this building tonight and Jeff Rimmer of course has selected two great ones for his intermission interviews already talking with Tony Esposito Don Cherry to follow but I noticed earlier an interested observer here representing the Boston Bruins John Cunniff taking lots of notes tonight his Bruins of course will face the winner of this series here's Christian tries to give it off to Mike Gartner it's taken away and Mark Johnson Back to the blue line now for McLean. Right wing pass. Sorella couldn't find the net. Now Johnson tries to wrap it around. Gustafson works him away. Here's Stevens starting out to Larry Murphy. Murphy up to center ice. Dumps it across the line. Back into the corner. Christian in on Sorella and the puck cleared over to Veleshek. The Devils come out on the attack. Lead pass to Randy Veleshek. Gets to the blue line. Drops it off for Mark Johnson. His shot hits Patrick Sundstrom in the skate. And back comes Michael Pavanka for the Capitals. A two-on-one with Miller. Miller cuts in, gives it to Pavanka. Back to Miller. And the pass crawls up his stick. He couldn't get a shot underway. O'Callahan tries to move it out. Now Ridley steals. He fires right on goal. And Burke makes the stick save. Mark Johnson bashed to the backboards. The puck comes over to Hatcher. Throws it behind the net. Back into the corner again for Hatcher. Tries to center, but McLean steals and clears out to center ice. Here's Velashek. Winds up, shoots to the point. Greg Smith keeps it in. And now it's cleared all the way to center. Kevin Hatcher takes it in across the blue line, and the play called offside now is the linesman hustle in to keep Corovo away from John McLean. Ivan Korovo's first goal of the playoffs has given Washington the 4-1 to one lead. It's the only goal scored by either team here in the second period. 
And what a lift for the Capitals in terms of the play of their third line with Hunter, who got a power play goal, out there with Leach and Corvo. All three of those guys have picked up tallies tonight for the Washington Capitals. Face off in neutral ice. We're waiting on Jack O'Callaghan, who is over at the bench selecting a new stick. Another thing, Mike, how impressive for the Capitals to see them go after the Devils, even though they've got that three-goal lead. They're continuing to press the attack. Moments ago, you had Pavanka and Miller on a two-on-one. Maybe they did a little too much passing, but they were aggressive. They were going at the New Jersey Devils, not just content to dump things off, really taking the play to New Jersey, particularly when New Jersey gambles with their point men. Stevens leads it ahead looking for Hunter. It goes all the way in, and Burke fires it to the blue line for Conacher. He starts back on the attack for the Devils. Doug Brown into the Washington zone. Taken away, here comes Steve Leach. Racing down the left wing. Leach tries to cut to the net. Fires a shot. Corvo bumps for the rebound and can't find it. And Burke has covered the puck. Now the Devils all crowd in on Ivan Corvo and start some pushing and shoving. And now Corvo, I don't think, is even on the bottom of the pile. Danico's got a pretty good grip on him. The Capitals' point men have stayed out of it so far, so there are more Devils in this fracas than there are Capitals. Kervers looks like he's at the bottom of the pile with Stephen Leach. Well, it's Leach and Corvo trying to work a play. Ivan Corvo made a spectacular pass to free Stephen Leach. Now Leach tries to return the favor. Cuts through the middle. Kervers with him. See the shot coming in. The tip by Corvo, and that puck is loose. So Corvo's going to whack at it. But when he whacks at it that last time, with Burke seemingly in control of it, that gets the ire of the New Jersey Devils. Washington Bullets open their playoff action tonight, and right now it's good news at the half at the Silver Dome in Pontiac, Michigan. The Bullets are leading the Pistons 42 to 38, and be sure to be with WDCA TV 20 Saturday night for Game Two of the Eastern Conference playoffs as those Bullets face the Pistons live from the Silver Dome at 8 p.m. Join Mel Proctor and Phil Shadier as they call all the action right here on your Super Station for Sports DC 20. So the calls are roughing to both Corvo and Danico at 16.48 of the second period. We had gone 13 minutes without having a penalty call. And now Corvo and Danico both head to the box with coincidental minors. Well, you know, Brian Murray just saying, hey, look, you know, our guy was attacked. And now they're also asking, why is this faceoff outside of the zone? It was very, very clear that the point man, I think it was Stevens and Gary Galley were the two point men, made sure they stayed out of that fracas. There was no question that they stayed away. If they had come in, automatically the faceoff goes outside of the zone. And now Brian Murray is irate that the faceoff is outside of the zone because Stevens and Galley kept their cool and stayed there for exactly this reason, and it doesn't pay off. There's no question they didn't come in, and no question that the puck was covered by Burke, so that's what stopped play. Here's Driver cutting in, fires, and his shot off the pad of Pete Peters. Peters holds it against the side of the net now, and play is called. There's a break in the action with a score. The Capitals four, and the Devils one. The puck back at the blue line. Here's a shot to the net that's blocked by Murphy. Now a drive from Bruce Driver on goal, and Peters makes the save. The puck's still loose, and Peters... Lying right on that goal line, trying to keep the puck away, but Hunter's in there attempting to clear out Kirk Muller. And the puck rests against the side of the goal. We certainly apologize for our video problems. Stay with us. We're going to correct it for you momentarily. Here is the scramble. Look at Kirk Muller pull his way outside of this pack, but two people get a stick on it before Muller can come up with it cleanly. And then look at Dale Hunter diving in there like a football player after a fumble. Pete Peters had extended himself, and watch the way Kerry Fraser comes into the action as well. And watch a little bit of snow laying right next to the goalpost, and doesn't this help the Capitals a bit? You can see it through the crowd of skaters, and maybe not as well at this angle, 
but the puck lay right against the goalpost. The goalies are always sweeping that snow away from the line. There's always a little bit of buildup there. I think it kept the puck away from the net. That helped Washington. Well, it certainly kept it away from that post where it could have hit and rebounded out. Instead, it just hits that snow and lies there. Doesn't make any kind of move. 2.45 to go in the second period. The Capitals on top, 4-1. to one. Mike Forens with Al Koken and Jeff Rimmer here on your Superstation for the Stanley Cup, DC 20. The puck cleared back to the point for Bruce Driver. His shot kicked aside by Peters. And back comes Dave Christian for the Capitals. He's ahead with Hunter. Sends it across the line into the corner. Dale Hunter fires a shot on goal. Burke the save. And now Aaron Broughton takes over for New Jersey. Back to the Washington Blue Line. Scott Stevens ahead for Gustafson over on the right wing and Gartner's offside on the play. Boy, you really got a feel for Mike Gartner. Things are just not bouncing his way. Trying to get on track tonight. Had a little room there. That pass behind him a bit. Tried to catch up with it with the skates. So many times he's able to do it. Not tonight. He's got to be frustrated, but the Capitals are helping out in this regard. If they can force the seventh game without Mike Gartner getting on track, Anything can happen in that seventh game, and you know you're going to get a guy like Gartner going eventually. The longer the Capitals keep this thing alive, the better the chances of Mike Gartner coming through, and when he does, he usually scores them in bunches. Gartner with two goals, three assists, and five points, 14 penalty minutes. Sanders up, a shot, and a goal! The Capitals get on the board again as Dave Christian takes the Gartner feed pass. Washington leads 5-1. to one. And if they're not going in for you, you can make sure they're going to go in for somebody else. Gartner with a terrific play, using his quickness to get to the puck and kind of just chips it through the ice. Watch how this works. Looks like the New Jersey Devils have control of it. But Driver can't come up with it cleanly. Gartner uses the quickness to beat him there. And look how he just chips that puck over to David Christian, who is left unattended. Burke doesn't do too good of a job either of cutting that pass off. But the quickness of Gartner really pays the dividends here for his teammate, David Christian. Now, I thought Sean Burke could have stopped that from coming through, but Christian makes them pay. Five to one Capitals. Christian's fifth goal of the playoffs. Gartner gets the assist at 17.48. Here's a centering pass, and Peters is able to block that, preventing Peter Sunds or Patrick Sundstrom from getting it. Now has to defend again, and Hatcher plays it out. Here comes Walk Peter Sundstrom, starting back for the Caps. He's across the line. Throws it into the corner. Sundstrom at the side of the net. Ties up with Belichick. Works it free. Mark Johnson has it poked away. Bobby Gould races in behind the Devils' goal. Capitals lead 5-1. to one. A minute and a half to go in the second period. Greg Smith. Outside the line, ties up with Patrick Sundstrom. And the puck cleared to center. Here's Bobby Gould. Now bounces it inside the New Jersey zone. Burke leaves it behind the net. Here's Velashek to start out to Johnson. And Scott Stevens hammers it all the way down the ice as the Devils are changing the line. Back is Bruce Driver. Icing is the call. Boy, the sellout crowd absolutely silent right now. And what will Jim Schoenfeld do? Does he keep Sean Burke in there for period number three? Does he bring Sobe out to try and fire his club up? Does he go with Sobe if there is a seventh game? Capitals right now in control of that with the four-goal lead. Of course, still a lot of action to go with the third period coming up, but Jim Schoenfeld has got to make a lot of decisions. And he's got to do it. He's got to make a number of them during this next intermission. From the draw, Corrin sends it to the boards. It's poked away and cleared out of the zone now by Ridley, and O'Callaghan piles in on top of him. We're in the final minute of play here in the second period. Don't forget to stay with us at our second intermission. Jeff Rimmer will be standing by with Don Cherry, the outspoken commentator from Hockey Night in Canada, former coach of the Colorado Rockies. Just think he was in charge of this franchise at one time. Yep. Also formerly with the Boston Bruins. You know, Don Cherry has a uh, great love for a couple of the Washington Capitals in particular, Scott Stevens and Dale Hunter. And in an early issue of uh, Space Off Magazine named the people he wanted to go to war with, and Hunter and Stevens were right there at the top of his list. 
Here's Ledyard back in his own zone. Drops it off for Stevens. Off the boards and out to center ice. Michael Pavanka races ahead on the left wing. He's got Miller split wide to the right. He walks in, passes, and it's blocked. Good play by Bruce Driver on defense. And here come the Devils on the attack. At the blue line, offside is called. Doug Sullivan coming in too soon on the right wing as O'Callaghan carried the puck into Washington territory. Hey, Michael Bavanka trying to do the right thing, but in this situation and in a couple of situations in the past couple of games, he's got to fire the puck. Tried to make a terrific play. Kelly Miller certainly was open, but when you've got the defenseman committed like that, he's not going to allow you an easy pass through. bavaka has got a great shot. Put it on goal. Blast it. Maybe Miller can go after a rebound. We've seen Sean Burke throughout the series give up some rebounds, particularly up the middle, and that's where Kelly Miller was positioned. Michael Pavanka has got the great shot. He's got to take it. I think Brian Murray just leaned down and said something similar to him right now on the Capitals bench. Here comes Velashek across the line. 25 seconds to go in the period. Scott Stevens plays it off the corner boards. Goes back now, but Doug Brown works it loose to Loisel. Claude Loisel over again to Doug Brown. Up to Conacher. Thrown back of the goal. Gustafson kicks it away. 10 seconds left in the period. At the side of the goal, Stevens chases to the corner. He and Brown tie up there, and finally it's frozen with six seconds left in period two. Final changes of the period coming up now as the Capitals have Hunter out there along with Peter Sundstrom, Bank Gustafson, Bobby Gould, and Kevin Hatcher. And the Devils have pulled Sean Burke. So they'll insert a sixth attacker. They've got Broughton on with Curvers at the point. Verbeek is up front with Driver and Korn. Muller will work the faceoff. They're going to try and get the puck to Curvers. Now Sundstrom goes to the bench. The Capitals leave Stevens out there. So they may try to get it to Curvers. They have time if they want to try and throw it over to Driver. But their two big shooters are back on that blue line. Loisel, a left-handed shot. Hunter also left-handed. Hunter will be trying to pull the puck to the corner. Loisel trying to turn and use it on his forehand to get it back to Curvers. They want Curvers to take a shot if possible. He gets the puck. He walks in. He shoots. It's just wide. Taken back of the goal by Stevens and cleared to the blue line just as time runs out in the period. Some pushing and shoving here in the aftermath. Shots on goal in period number two for the Washington Capitals, 10. A two-period total of 18. And the New Jersey Devils with 11. A two-period total of 20. You'll see the best of the Stanley Cup playoffs coming your way here on your superstation, DC 20. Lead five.